to the best of to the best of my intuition and this is not backed up by any kind of confirmed sources so just take this as my personal intuition those that are at the very top of the shadow organizations that we're talking about the very elite the most intelligent the most crystallized surface to self beings that are in a sense at the top of these wheels that have spun for hundreds of years in civilization especially actually in the last couple hundred years um that sort of control most everything that you see or have influenced or have a say in a lot of things you see that is not the government the beings that are call them the elite of these types of institutions or groups a lot of them have already left this sphere willingly because they see it's hopeless and they no longer have the probability of turning the civilization into service to self-oriented civilization they see that they have lost that battle in a sense and so the wisest and the smartest of these entities um, are already no longer fully engaged with these programs they are um, both from the outside and both from the people to the sort of execution or sort of the extensions side of things so from us towards them it is crumbling gradually but also from the top down it is crumbling gradually because the most intelligent beings that can read into the probabilities know that what they're dealing with right now is the last um, strain the last explosions of rebellion from their side against the transformation that is inevitable from our side does that make sense okay so one thing that I want to share is that it's not about us versus them it's not about winning from um, from these sort of uh, um, sneaky intelligence service to self oriented consciousnesses um, and organizations and corporations it is ultimately I see that a lot of them the ones that are too dedicated to that have already sort of departed a lot of them is what I'm sensing they're already no longer engaged but there's a lot of these people that are not at the core there's only few beings percentage wise in the universe that are hardcore service to self oriented it's a way fewer number than the service to others oriented beings in this universe um, so the ones that are truly at the core of it that will not anytime soon give up their disposition or bias towards service to self those see that there is no hope in a sense they have gained the most intelligence weird as it sounds the most cunningness the most perceptiveness because they're vibrating at the higher possible at the highest possible frequency of service to self which it might sound weird because if you're a high frequency are you not all about love yes love for self because self is all it's just another approach it's another bias but these beings that are so set and anchored and that maybe even came here without becoming physical in a way without being born these entities recognize the state of this collective reality transforming and they have already admitted their defeat and that's okay they're moving on they're not doing anything useless so what we're left with especially in the coming 20 years what we're left with is the remnants is the it's the puppets the service to self oriented puppets a lot of which are service to others oriented but really confused so what i see happening is not so much winning from them or discarding them what i see as a possibility is educating them and letting them know that what they truly desire is possible in different ways and it doesn't need to be um, through theft it doesn't need to be through corruption it doesn't need to be through greed it can be achieved in much much more harmonious ways and I think that a large percentage of these beings will gradually start to see this light themselves and I think it is in a sense our duty and it makes us that much stronger as an oppositional force to actually hold that in our consciousness as well because what weakens us is when we see us against them what strengthens our conviction and our light and our success our guaranteed success what strengthens that and what accelerates that is our ability to love regardless it is our ability to care regardless and when we overwhelm those that are confused those that are service to self oriented because they think that's the way to go when we overwhelm them with love and clarity and conviction and an anchoredness in our truth then they can crack they can transform they can find healing they can find clarity they can find realignment and there's no reason why they cannot overnight transform and be reabsorbed into our new the arising era of abundance and love and harmony so keep that in your hearts 
as you encounter those beings, whether they're just random confused neighbors that don't really know what they're doing, or whether you're ever encountering organized entities that seem to be very cunning and dedicated in their actions. Regardless, hold it in your heart that they too are made of light. And I do visualize the possibility of winning them over rather than winning over them, if that makes sense. <laughs> you, will f you will find that this will make the difference. This has made the difference for me in my um, attempts already so far. And this has made the difference for me when I'm facing uh, non-physical visitations of uh, interesting um, interesting uh, consciousnesses that uh, would like to exacerbate my existing biases to the point of failure or uh, hypocrisy or whatever. So I've been dealing with these things for quite some time and one thing that makes me feel in inconquerable no matter what happens is the fact that I am not afraid. Why am I not afraid? I'm not saying I will never have a scared moment if something like that does fully show up in my face at a very physical level. I'm not saying that there won't be a moment of scare, but what's the overriding conviction and perspective here is truly that I come, that I've practiced to come from a place of seeing beyond the surface of what this game is playing itself out to be. And so I see into the hearts of beings when they approach me. I can see into the nature of their consciousnesses. And so I approach them with a transcendent attitude of love and connection and oneness that is very hard for them to actually penetrate without disintegrating themselves or without switching from service to self to service to others. If you visualize an energy field literally around you that is service deeply, profoundly service to others oriented, no matter what it shows up as at the service, but if your vibration underneath, your true conviction is truly care for all the greater good, the collective, as yourself. Everyone you meet is yourself. When that's your conviction, something happens to your vibration that does not allow negative intention to come close to you without disintegrating or transmuting itself. Does that make sense? So this is what will make you strong. What makes us weak as a force of light, as the true Illuminatis or the um, lumi luminaries, perhaps, what makes us truly inconquerable and successful in this endeavor to transform this planet from the remnants of darkness, cleaning it up and transmuting it into a vibrant, vivid, bright civilization is indeed our level of conviction that no one actually means harm, that actually everyone is innocent, that actually every entity, no matter how evolved, they can be more evolved than us, but they will not be more evolved than the love and the light, which is call upon directly from your connection to the one infinite creator. So this field is always yours. It doesn't matter how evolved another being is, how tech savvy they are, or how many guns they're pointing at your face. This field is inconquerable. This field of love, which comes from the recognition of oneness only, which comes from the recognition that the person that's looking at you is you in another form. It's like the tablecloth example. We have one fabric, we have one substance. Here I am, out of the field of infinite consciousness and infinite unity, I crystallize myself, I individuate myself. A, fr a, a free agency, a center, a vortex of free agency starts to form itself, starts to gather desire, and starts to act on behalf of the one infinite creator to express and experience its infinite potential in form. And it does the same with itself over here. Now, if these beings get crystallized enough, they can start to look at each other. But what's looking at what, really? So if you maintain that awareness that there is one fabric looking at itself through infinite points of view, then this very palpable aura will be formed around you. And this is your protection. To love on those that wish to harm you is the most powerful and transcendent protection that you can offer yourself and, in a sense, them. And you're offering them choice. You're offering them another color, another flavor of experience. You're offering them clarity that they can choose from if they want to. They can taste of it. But it's to them, to those that are service to self-oriented, it's like a field of fire that they can't really penetrate. It hurts them to be inside of it. Does that make sense? But as soon as you turn into them, 
and you embrace their attitude, then there is an entrance point there and they can suggest whatever they want and you will submit. You will submit your free will out of fear when you don't need to fear because love is inconquerable. Trust is inconquerable. Faith is inconquerable. Placing your faith in the one infinite creator, calling upon his love and light for all beings is inconquerable. It's the most powerful force you can call upon. If you maintain that, then there's no way for negativity to truly reach you. Unless it's completely relevant for your theme or it's the time to go or whatever, you know. But in general, that's not the case. So love them, offer them choice as well. Because a lot of them are simply confused. Imagine some of those most intelligent, savvy, cunning, smart, behind the scenes, sneaky, evolved beings, human beings even. A lot of them are human beings. Imagine them having a change of heart and putting all that skillfulness and, and reversing the very processes and systems that they put in place to begin with and see some of them start to pioneer quote-unquote against the existing structure that when confused they actually helped to create and this is what's actually happening there are a lot of these ex-military ex-black ops figures ex-shadow government figures that are coming to their senses and that are perhaps somewhat afraid and that are perhaps not sticking out their necks immediately but they are they are willing to stand up they are willing to do what they now feel perhaps temporarily guilty for and want to change they want to make a contribution and so they're going to put the f the very fact that they've been associated with these organizations is going to be so powerful when a whole wave of them is going to come out to speak out on it bravely courageously and those beings especially deserve our full-fledged support and our vibrational vote when that happens. Because it is a tricky position. If you come from the place of I'm a physical being and I want to live my life, being physically threatened is a very scary thing. If that's the point of view you come from, and that's the point of view most people come from. So it's one thing to know that your consciousness and this is just a dream, you become naturally way more fearless in that way. doesn't mean your first chakra can never flare up with adrenaline or, or fear, but the overriding practiced perspective is that of love and fearlessness and I know I'm eternal so you'll immediately meet your own inclination for fear with an immediacy of trust and remembering it's all fine it's okay you're eternal it's okay and you trust a lot of these beings don't have access to that consciously and so when they come when they consider coming out it's a very dark challenging profoundly testing dynamic for them and so when they do come out, and they will start to come out more so again this year, um, and the coming years, obviously, but this year as well, you will find that it's really amazing to just send these beings love and light and feel that sense of union and support to their hearts. And they will make some of the most impactful changes in overthrowing those shadows and really tipping the scales of this collective vote for an enlightened civilization. So imagine them working hand in hand with us for the brightness of this planet, for the equality of abundance and, and freedom and accessibility for all beings.